look in the mirror Man, you're so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's you Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show If you're easily triggered, leave now Because this is not the show for you Now, what I'm going to cover right now Is a topic for discussion I'm going to address the fact that women Who leave who divorce their men, how they have regret afterwards, post-divorce regret. As we already know, that women without higher education divorce men at an 80% level, I mean rate. Women who have degrees, they divorce men at a 90% rate, according to the American Sociological Association. We know this, we heard this a thousand times, but we haven't heard how women tend to regret the divorce afterwards. And I'm gonna play two women who's going to give you that information and at the same time i'm going to give you facts that and statistics in this video so let me go ahead and pull it up for you hold on one second y'all yes i'll find it for you let's get it i don't think i can ever love anybody like i i loved my ex-husband right off the bat i'm a, I am, i'm not going to interrupt it but i want you to hear what she said she said she thinks she would never love a man the same way she did her ex-husband now let's continue without interruption i don't think i can ever love anybody like i i loved my ex-husband most women can say that it's a hard thing for women to say my ex-husband was a very sweet man he took care of me like no other person would take care of me he took care of me when i was seasoned he took care of me when i was he took care of me when no one else was there he was there and so the love that i have for him even now i think would never be like i don't know never know never say never but i don't know if i can love anybody the way i love him see when you meet a woman like that man that woman is forever imprinted by that man See, it takes a hell of a man to imprint a woman when it comes to imprinting her with your character. It's different. Now, I want you to understand that there are different types of imprints that we never really discussed, but maybe one day I'll do a video about that. You can imprint a woman sexually. I mean, just give her the best thing she ever had in her life. Just put that thing on her real good, have that swag. See, you got to have swag with that. You got to have a little status with that, with that wood you're giving her for that to be an imprint. She'll fall in love, blah, blah, blah. We get that, but that's a different type of imprint. This imprint is the type of imprint that a woman never gets over that because I've done that to women before. And what do I, I've done both of them. The thing and also what I'm going to tell you about. Character. Treating a woman so damn good, treating her so damn right, that when she's foolish enough to get bored or foolish enough to leave you, you have introduced her to a lifestyle that every other man must compete with now. The little things that you've done. The big things that you do. Other men will not do it. Especially if you're the type of gentleman, I ain't saying put on the pedestal, but when you are in a relationship and you try to be right and do the right things and try to make the other person happy and make them feel comfortable and all that shit, if you truly do those things from the heart to some of these, to, not all, to some of these women, even when they leave you, they come back. They'll call you, they'll text you, they'll try to, I had women in my lifetime, man, try to come back to me after we broke up and I'm already done moved on or I'm just like doing a single life right then. And they will give you all the coochie on the break. They, they have sex with you more then after the breakup than they did in the relationship because they're doing everything they can to get you back. You get what I'm saying? I'm not telling you to be a simp. I'm just saying that there are men who are just good men, who are just good, generous. Ain't, generosity does not mean money all the time, but good men. And when these women get these type of men and then the relationship ends, they regret it. So let's keep going. So when we first got here, my whole focus was school. He told me not to work, not to do anything. This man worked two, three jobs just to make sure I was going to school. Listen, you give props where props deserves. He worked his butt off to make sure I went to school. I got all types of degrees, then it's all types of degrees. <laughs> just kept going to school and kept going to school. Oh, your husband was cooking for you, right? Oh, it's <laughs> cooking all the time. You know, then and now you know that man was for it's a funny man. You know, he was cooking all types of stuff for me. Cook, I did not cook. I still don't know how to cook. I don't care. After my divorce, this woman wasn't even a real woman. And that dude she had was a sucker because he didn't vent her. All he did was fall in love with a woman who can't cook. And look at her. And I ain't trying to be funny, but she big in my damn TV screen. Now, how in the hell a big woman can't cook? That's the problem. A lot of big women can't cook no more. They're just eating. You know what I mean? He was feeding her good, and she was eating good. 
and he married a woman who refuses to cook because she didn't know how to cook. And then he was working two to three jobs, and he did all that just to help her get through school. See, he's a sucker and a good man at the same time. He could be a good man for a good woman. See, that's a very thin line. Those type of men right there, they have to vet women properly so that they can get a good woman because they're going to be good to those women. He got a woman, a mustard back helper, who didn't appreciate him, didn't care about what he did for her. You know what I'm saying? And now that she's out in that dating market or if she's out with another man, she's looking back and saying, damn, I had it real good when I was with that man. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Worth, I didn't know how to put gas in my car. Damn. <laughs> and I did not know how to put gas in my car. Every Sunday, he would wash my car, he would put gas in my car, and he would clean it and bring it. I love, ladies, I love all of that. I love all that over something that I could have probably, you know, at that time, I took it for granted. Like, when he didn't wash my car, I'd be like, why didn't you wash my car? Like, why do you not wash my car today? <laughs> like, that's normal. This is what he did. He washed my car every Sunday, washed my car and put gas. I did not know how to put gas in my car. You think the degrees got to your head? Yes. Yes, I think it got to a point I had the job, I had the corner office, right? I was working for the state of Ohio. You couldn't tell me nothing. Here I was meeting with the mayor and blah, blah, blah. And I was out there and, you know, he'll say something. I'll be like, uh, uh, what you... Uh, that woman just told you that when she got her degrees, her higher education and started making more money, she, trying to, she changed on him. It goes right back to that statistic that the ASA says that 90% of all divorces are initiated by women who have higher education. She didn't have that at first. She was more submissive, but just still not a good woman. But as soon as she got her degree and started making money, she initiated divorce. That's These are one of those type of women, y'all. It's crazy. It's all about you from Uncle Sam, sit down somewhere. <laughs> I'm the one that filed for you. That's another story, okay? Yeah. That's another story. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that because women, I think a lot of people talk about this filing situation when you file or you file for somebody to get their green card or become, you know, whatever it is. They don't owe you nothing. If that's your husband, that's your husband. Like you file for your husband. Why do you think you have to get something from that? Um, and not all of those relationships ends up bad. Not every relationship ends up bad because you fall for the person. It's the way you carry yourself. You can have your green card, they can have their green card, you can get together and your relationship can still go sour. It's how much watering you want to put into that relationship, right? Like, so I filed for him and I need to throw that at his face like it was water. He'll start talking. I'm like, I'm about to call immigration on you. About to call me. Damn, call immigration. Damn, 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 damn. Annoying. Immigration. Meanwhile, hold on. Meanwhile, I'm scared. Uh, Meanwhile, I didn't mean it. I took him for granted. Right? Like, men need to feel validated. Just like women want to feel validated, men want to feel validated. They want to feel important. And I think I took him for granted. I took the fact that he's always going to be there. He has nowhere to go. He loves me. And I took it for granted that I lost a sense of respect for him, you know, the respect that you give a man to be. She lost respect for a man who did everything for her. This is why you never give women the leverage in a relationship. A lot of you do that 50-50 relationship. When I say 50-50, I'm talking about you being a weak person who depends, who is codependent on 50% of all income coming from her. I believe in 100%. Now, when I say 100%, paying 100% of everything, I mean that you have the ability to do, to do so. I'm not saying that you need to. I believe that you should be able to carry every bill by yourself, but she can work and pay some of those bills. You have the ability to pay 100% of the bills in case something happens to her to where she cannot work or in case she leaves your ass and you'll be able to pay all the bills without stressing and downsizing and downgrading. That's what I mean by 100%. For the men out there who depend I'm like codependency on that woman's income, you'll suck her because all she got too much power. As soon as she wants to leave you, now you're struggling. When I say be able to pay up uh, 100% of all the bills, if you need to, that's putting you in the best version of yourself. You cannot tell me not being able to pay all your bills on your own is not 
a good version of yourself. You cannot tell me that depending on a woman or anyone else's income makes you into the best version of yourself. You can debate me all you want. I believe a man should be able to pay all the damn bills if he chooses to. He has to have the ability to. But while he's in a relationship with the ability to pay for all the bills, he should let her pay some of the bills because she has to earn her keep. You don't got to go on in your pocket. Let her pay some of them damn bills too. But just be prepared in case she leaves you. That's what I'm talking about. So I don't do that little weak-ass, codependent mindset of I got to depend on my woman for 50% of all the bills because of the fact a woman is emotional and she can it don't matter if you've been with her for five six seven ten years if she's tired of your ass she leaves we see it all the time and then you have to go stay with your mama or some shit because your name ain't on the lease let's keep going be able to help him to become the leader i, I didn't do that i took so many things for granted this is the dennis bentle show well that was your show now let me go ahead and um put the facts data and statistics y'all I hope y'all understood what I just told y'all. That wasn't me being rude to you. And I ain't apologizing for it either. But what I'm trying to tell you, y'all got y'all to gotta be man, man. Y'all got to be a man. For real. Stop depending on these women, man. These women don't be caring about you like that. They'll leave you don't care. All it takes for them to start, to, to start doubting you, don't want to be with you, and it'll hurt your pockets, man. Y'all got to start being able to stand on your own two feet. Now, here go the facts, data, and statistics. I'm going to put on the screen for you. All right, let's read it together. Now it says, now when it comes to women out of these divorces, how much they regret it, it says this. The initial glance stands at 27% of women owning up to regret post-divorce versus 39% of men. Perhaps this is because men with that ability to compartmentalize that we stereotype stamp them with begin the process of boxing up the marriage and putting it on the shelf long before they actually happen. Now, ain't that. When a man is done with you, we are done with you. That means we have completely given up. There's nothing you can do to savage a relationship from a man who really believes in his heart that it's a waste of time of, to be with you. It's just impossible. We'll, be, we'll move on by then. So your regret is different from ours. Most of the time women regret it because of the resources that they no longer have or because there's no longer a father there for those children. When men get tired of you, we don't want nothing to do with you. It's more absolute with us. Now, let's keep going. All right. I don't got my glasses, but it says approximately 50% of divorced couples say they regret their decision to separate. This statistic is a powerful reminder that divorce is not a decision to be taken lightly. It highlights the fact that half of all divorced couples regret their decision to separate, indicating that the decision to divorce should be made with careful consideration and thought. This statistic is an important piece of information to include in a blog post about regretting divorce statistics as it serves to emphasize the gravity of the situation. All right, quick. Let me get to the other one for you. One second, y'all. All All right. The continuation while I was just reading. All right. 68% of divorced individuals with children reported that they wish they had tried harder. This statistic is a powerful reminder of the potential consequences of divorce, particularly for those with children. It speaks to the deep regret that many divorced individuals feel and serves as a warning to those considering divorce to think carefully before making such a life-altering decision. Okay. Regretting divorce statistics overview. 53% of divorced people say some part of them still love their ex. Like the first woman I just showed you, she obviously loves her ex, okay? Okay. The statistic, this statistic serves as a poignant reminder that divorce is rarely a clean break. Even when a couple decides to part ways, the emotional connection they once shared can remain. It speaks to the complexity of the situation and the difficulty of letting go of a relationship that once meant so much. Now, according to the, the Get Nooks Marketing Data Report of 2024, the most surprising regretting divorce statistics and trends in 2024, I just read them. That's a recent one. Is there any more? Okay, here we go. 42% of divorced couples said they could have saved their marriage by putting in more effort. This statistic is a powerful reminder that divorce is not always the only solution to a troubled marriage. It, excuse me. It suggests that with enough effort, 
Many couples could have savaged their relationship and avoided the heartache of divorce. This is an important, sorry, this is an important point to consider when discussing regretting divorce statistics, as it provides a glimmer of hope that, with the right effort, couples can still find a way to make their marriage work. That lady didn't want to make her marriage work. That was the problem. Okay? Now, let's keep going. One second. I got one more clip to show you of another woman. I think you may find it very interesting. I'm going to say this with love. I'm going to talk to you like you're one of my coaching clients because I have ladies who actually believe this. You are 100% wrong. And let me tell you why. What one woman considers to be a good one is not the same as what another woman considers to be a good one. I have clients who regret divorcing their husbands because they later realized that what they were asking for or what they were feeling in the moment was just that, a feeling in the moment. Many women have good ones, but what I consider to be a good one may not be what you consider to be a good one. Some women think that a man who he's basically, he does everything the same every day. You know exactly where he is. He's literally has the same schedule every day. They think that is boring. They think it is. That's the problem. They think it's boring, but another word for that is unappreciative of what they have. Ungrateful. See, look here. Is it even worth marrying some of these modern day women? If you already know that there's going to be a chance that she gets bored and leave you, because that's what I've been covering a whole lot lately. It ain't always because of infidelity. It ain't all because of um, spousal abuse of any kind, physical or verbal. Sometimes they just get bored with you doing the right thing. Now let that sink in your mind. Bored with you doing the right things. You're not doing the wrong things. If you did the wrong things, you probably fight for you and try to make you kind of make it work. But you're doing the right things, being stable, being dependable, having a routine, being consistent. The shit they say they always want. Right. But you're doing the right things and you're getting punished for it. No good deed goes unpunished, I guess, like they say. So is it worth it? That's the real question. So you really have to vet women. And I strongly encourage you getting a woman from a different um, cultural background in America. Someone without a westernized point of view. Because a lot of these westernized women are, in my most humble opinion, not worth it. I'm telling you that right now. Okay? They drop you at a drop of a dime. Five years into a relationship, they are bored and they see Pookie. And Pookie give them what they want. So she go behind your back and get Pookie thing put up in her. And then she leaves you. Her and Pookie may stay together for two or three, even four years. That falls apart. Now she is chronically single. Every time she get a man, it don't work out. Years pass by. Think about what I'm saying, man. He literally has the same schedule every day. They think that is boring. They think it is mundane. And they want something else. They want fire and spice and spontaneity and they want all the things and there's nothing wrong with that but women divorce men for that it doesn't mean he wasn't a good one at all it means he wasn't a good one for her at the time because if that wasn't the case even Tyrese's ex-wife Tyrese the singer would not have admitted to regretting divorcing him exactly 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 these women get bored even with multi-millionaires like tyrese gibson that woman thought she had a payday but she hasn't been able to get no money from tyrese because he had a prenup and she still challenged that but um tyrese gibson said he has spent over half a million dollars fighting her lawyers because she's doing everything she could or can to try to break the prenup but since she's not getting no money because she don't have enough money to box with him because he got a lot more money than she do now she comes on social media saying that she regret divorcing him she regret listening to her friends. See, that's that that conniving in a woman. She thought she had it made, all right? And if she would have got the money, she would have run around saying, hey, I'm glad I divorced him. But now times are hard, and she realized she had a good man and no other man is going to do anything with her. All the, She looked good now, so most men are just tagging it and moving around, hitting it and moving around, and she don't want that. And she got a family she used to have. Now she want to come back to Tyrese. Now she want to make content online um, trying to be the next Kevin Samuels. 
I used her clip before way in the day and I didn't know it was her. I stopped and I will never use her shit no more because of the way that she destroyed a black family. She destroyed that man's heart. She destroyed that child's heart. She didn't care nothing about that man. She didn't try to um reconcile that man first. She tried to go for his pockets first. And then when she couldn't get it, then she wanted to go say she uh, shouldn't listen to her. I don't give a shit about that. I will never use her clips. All right. I'm not doing that. That's the biggest hypocrite on the planet. And how can you use a woman, a content creator, that you know is Tyrese Gibson's ex and you know she destroyed a black family for selfish reasons? How can you use her work to try to make your show better? I just, just me. I am not going to use her. That is the hypocrite. That woman don't care about, if she can't care about her child, she can't care about you. If she don't care about the fact that she had a good man and that she destroyed and ripped a father away from her child and there's no fucking way in hell she can care about anybody else. If a mother can't care for her child and Tyrese wasn't abusing her, she said that. She said that Tyrese never abused her or cheated on her as far as she know and she still left. That fuck up, man. Anyway, <clears throat> as I was saying, but anyway, um, I got me hot behind that shit, man. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be careful out there. Yeah.